Let's go on to another technique, the C14 technique for measuring primary productivity. It was invented in 1951 by a gentleman called Einar Steeman Nielsen. He's famous for this technique and really Einar Steeman Nielsen, along with Calvin Benson that also discovered the Calvin Benson cycle, scientists around this time were sort of the beneficiaries of the nuclear age, the development of nuclear weapons, the development of our ability to produce radioactive compounds, not something people always think of as a plus, but you know, we have x-rays and we have other really beneficial things, nuclear energy, uh, that come from radioactive compounds. And scientists began to discover ways in which we could use radioactive compounds, like carbon-14, as a tool for understanding what's going on in photosynthesis. And Calvin and Benson figured that out. And then Steve and Nielsen, as well, developed a technique called the C14 bicarbonate technique for measuring primary production in the ocean. Well, if you have forgotten what C14 is and what isotopes are, I suggest you go back to that chapter in that section in chapter two, when we talk about isotopes, we talked about stable isotopes up until uh, when we talked about uh, temperature measurements and using the shells of foraminifera and the O18, the stable isotope in those shells to track ocean temperatures in geologic past. Well, here we're using a radioactive compound something that spontaneously erupts, spontaneously emits radiation as a way of tracing primary productivity in the ocean. The advantage of this method is that it's very sensitive. Uh, you can just have very low concentrations of plants and you have very low rates of photosynthesis and this method can still be used. Whereas the oxygen method tends not to be as sensitive. Although Chris Langdon uh, at uh, Lamont Doherty at that time um, helped develop a technique that'll, that makes the oxygen method a little bit more sensitive, but in fact the C14 method remains sort of the gold standard, if you want to think about it that way, for measuring primary productivity in the ocean. And, and scientists who consider themselves to be biological oceanographers that are measuring primary productivity generally do it this way. Here's what the technique involves. Samples are taken at different depths. These illustrations illustrate water sampling bottles. Those samples are brought to the surface. This generally happens in, I don't want to say the middle of the night, but it happens before the sun goes up. So if you're a scientist like me that was involved in measuring primary production, you always have to get up before the sun comes up. Not always the easiest thing to do. Clear bottles are filled with those samples. Those samples are then inoculated or injected with radioactive carbon. And if you go back to chapter six again and look at carbon in the ocean and you look at the marine carbonate system, what you'll find is that the kind of carbon that's available to plants in the ocean is primarily bicarbonate. And it's not important again that you remember that, but when CO2 dissolves, in water and in seawater, it forms bicarbonate. So the form of bi uh, the form of C14, again, a radioactive carbon isotope, is is bicarbonate. That's the one that's really added to each of these bottles. Those bottles, one of them, is filtered immediately, because really what we're looking for is the rate at which how much carbon-14 is being absorbed into cellular material. Well, sometimes there's inorganic processes or sediments that'll automatically absorb carbon-14. So we want to eliminate that as a possibility. So a blank is taken, a non-biological for to estimate non-biological uptake. And then that blank is then subtracted from whatever measurements we get from the rest of the samples. Well, after we've inoculated these with C14 and taken the blank, we put the bottles out on a string at different depths. And we do this right at dawn. We load up all these bottles and put them on a float and throw it off the ship. And then the ship has to hang around all day, this, uh, this buoy array of bottles that are incubating at different depths. The phytoplankton in here are photosynthesizing. As they photosynthesize, they're absorbing carbon-14. Now, of course, some of the carbon is just the original carbon bicarbonate that was in the water sample in the beginning, so not 
everything that they're taking up is carbon-14, but some small percentage of it that we can estimate, because we know how much carbon-14 we put in, is being taken up by the cells as they grow. And again, what you would expect is that the highest rates of uptake are going to be in the surface waters, the lowest rates of uptake are going to be in deeper waters where there's not as much light. Well, after a daylight period, so at dusk, we pull up the array, we retrieve the bottles, we filter out their contents onto filters, okay, so each water bottle is then filtered. Those filters are then placed in a small vial to which we add something called scintillation cocktail. I just love that word. You don't want to drink it, but scintillation cocktail is a fluid that when a radioactive particle is emitted, that fluid lights up. And by counting the numbers of flashes of that fluid, we can tell how much radioactivity is in a sample. So the radioactivity is in the cells that we've collected on this filter. That filter is then put in the scintillation cocktail, and it's going to be flashing. We then take that vial and put it in a scintillation counter. So there's actually a, a machine that can measure the flashes of light that are being produced by the scintillation cocktail as the radioactive carbon is emitting its particles. And by counting all those up, we can tell how much carbon was absorbed, how much carbon was fixed by the phytoplankton in that sample. And from those measurements, without suffering you with all the, the myriad of details, we can calculate rates of photosynthesis, rates of primary production in the ocean. Again, it seems like a, a lot of details, but thinking about how oceanographers go about their job gives you some appreciation for the kinds of numbers that we get and also how difficult it is to estimate primary productivity in the ocean. This one experiment, which might involve two, four, six, eight, or ten bottles, takes all day, and you get eight or ten numbers for an all-day experiment for one location in an ocean that's huge, ginormous. So it's a lot of work to get productivity numbers, and the few that we get are really looked at carefully and, and they're numbers that we want to that we sort of hang a lot of information on because we don't get a lot of estimates of that.